Our story today begins, as many often do, with obsession. Specifically in this case though, my obsession with Infinity the game. Getting into a game that already has 15 years of history behind it means that I get to look back at previously released sculpts and get all of the joy and excitement of discovering things that were released sometimes quite a while ago. So meet the Kuge Delegate, a recent discovery from Infinity's range. She's a high value target from the Japanese secessionist army starter box. Combine me falling in love with this sculpt and the fact that I'm currently hosting an autumn themed competition in my Discord, which uses a fixed limited color palette. And my brain starts to wander a little. I found myself tumbling over whether I could maybe pastelize some of those autumnal tones to make a cool kind of shimmery sheer fabric for her kimono. And in doing so, I learned a really valuable lesson about pushing past the ugly phase. And so I thought I would use this video to drag you along with me so that you could also get a look at the lesson I learned and see if it maybe helps. But before we do that, I need to fulfill my obligations to the big YouTube machine by asking you to like this video, to subscribe to the channel, to enable notifications, and of course, if you wish to support the channel further, to have a look at the links in the description below, because they really help. So with that aside, let's get back to our delegate miniature and paint that kimono. I began operations here with a white primed miniature, so here's a look at that that you definitely don't need. You probably know what white primer looks like. And so what I decided to do here was to start saturated and start to pull that saturation back later. At least that was the plan. But in order to do this, what I first did was picked three of the autumnal tones from my color palette that I provided to my Discord. And the plan was to sort of blend them together in order of value. Darkest being the shadow, lightest being the highlight. I also needed to desaturate the green a touch just to get it closer to what was available on that limited palette. So to start this saturated process, I first of all just identified where my deepest shadows were and started to map those in with my green. This being the darkest color in value, it made sense to use as the shadow tone. And then from there, I just needed to wet blend and glaze in the orange and eventually the pink to get a kimono, which at this stage kind of looks a bit of a mess. And once it's all blended up here, well, kind of still looks pretty weird, actually. Um, but I was confident. I was confident that the next stage in the process would be the one that nailed it, that pulled it out of this slump that it was in. So my genius first move is going to be to mix a very thin white in my airbrush. And you could probably do this same process with a brush, I would have thought. But it'd probably be a little bit slower, quite a lot slower. But then basically what I want to do here is use that very thin white paint to kind of cloud off the kimono, sort of fade it back, just by building up gentle layers until everything takes on a faded kind of pastel look. And indeed, what we're left with is a very faded, pastel-y version of what we had before, but it still looks kind of ugly, doesn't it? So now we need to actually start making some concerted effort to address that ugliness. And what I'm gonna do to tackle this is mix up some glazes of my three original colors. I'm now gonna work super slowly and super carefully because this won't take long anyway because it's just not a particularly big area. And I'm gonna start glazing back with my three colors towards the previously determined shadows. I need to be careful to make sure I'm still leaving some of that faded pastel colour showing because that's going to be our silky satiny kind of look. But we need to reintroduce some saturation, especially into the shadows, just to get things looking a bit brighter and a bit prettier and a bit more mini paintery. When we get to glazing the green though, I do need to take a slightly different approach. It's such a saturated colour that it can easily destroy all the good work we've done up to this point, making an ugly desaturated miniature. With that in mind, more of a pin washing or panel lining kind of vibe seems appropriate here, keeping the green very sparing. And finally, with that stage now complete, you can finally start to see what I'm trying to achieve here. We're actually beginning to push past the ugly. And this was where it clicked for me, that moment of realizing that sometimes you have to stick with it way longer than you might think to get it out of that ugly stage. And after that, things just start getting better and better. 
we next want to sort of push the top end a little bit so I'll start applying some careful white glazes to some of the areas I want to look a bit shinier or shimmerier. Whilst doing this I can also use the same thin white paint to just apply some more sort of subtle slightly faded edge highlights. And then I can get a little bit more aggressive with a thicker more saturated white and the key word here is sparing. We definitely don't want to go crazy plopping this everywhere, but we can add a few more bright spot highlights, definitely. And that kind of drew my little experiment to a close. But I think it's always best to observe things in context, so instead of just showing you the finished kimono and saying, here's my lesson in getting past ugly, I wanted to actually finish the miniature. So here's a look at how it ended up after everything was done. And I really think this provides such a great example of the value of pushing past ugly. I knew what I wanted as an end result, and I knew that the processes that I was using should work. I'd seen examples previously of those same processes working for other people. So I just had to trust myself, trust the process, and just keep going. And the end result actually looks maybe even a little bit better than I thought it was going to look. And sure, there's definitely ways that you could get a shimmery sheer fabric like this quicker. I fully appreciate that. But I chose this way because I thought it would be a good demonstration of the importance and value of pushing past that ugly stage. And, well, it was. So, folks, thank you so much for watching. I'd like to wish you a happy hobbying, and I will see you in the next one. Bye-bye for now.